everybody, welcome back to Reissued. My name is Andrew. I made a mistake. So as I mentioned before, I'm working on developing my website and selling some products through there based on what you guys have expressed interest in. So um, the jersey blazer that I made for the thrift flip a couple of months back was really popular. And so I um, found some blazers at a thrift store and purchased some jerseys on eBay to create those. Um, some of those worked out pretty well. Unfortunately, buying things online, sizing can be a little bit tricky. So I purchased these two jerseys. They were an extra large. And given that the original jersey that I had worked with was a size medium, I thought, oh, that'll be fine. However, the type of jersey was different. This one was intended to be much more fitted. So after I had already sort of taken it apart and cut it down the front, I realized that it wouldn't fit properly around the blazer. And so I have a hacked up jersey. So I tried this on as it is and I didn't mind how it fit. So I thought, what if I put a zipper down the front and made this into kind of like a bomber jacket? So I found these pants for $3 at my thrift store. They're like boys dazzle basketball pants. And the colors and fabrics go pretty well together. The black ties in the zipper um, with the navy and the white. So I'm gonna cut a bit of this and make a sleeve to elongate the sleeve here. I already removed a little band around here that was gathering this in to make it flat, so I should be able to just attach the rest of the sleeve here. And then I have this in my stock already. I had purchased a sweater a while back to get some ribbing, so this is just a plain black ribbed fabric that I'm gonna put around the bottom and around the cuff to sort of secure everything off and really give it that bomber kind of feel. So hopefully this project should be pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. I've said that before and regretted it, but let's get going. This is the part of the video where I ask you to subscribe. I often forget that part, but I didn't forget today, so go hit the subscribe button. Boom. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna focus on here is cutting the additional sleeve that's gonna make this into a long sleeve out of the pants. I have a second jersey here that's exactly the same size and style, just in a different color, that I'm gonna be cutting up as well to make a second jacket. Um, but I'm planning to use the same pants for both jackets. So you can see here, I think I should be able to get two sleeves out of each pant leg here. Um, however, there is a little zipper detail here at the bottom. I could put that in the jacket, but I think for a bomber style, it would be weird to have a zipper sleeve. So I'm actually gonna try to cut just above that and have this distance be one sleeve. And then I'm gonna open up the waistband here and see if I can't get the full amount of fabric. I think I might need that. And uh, cut the second sleeve up here. So I'll get sleeves for both jackets out of this one pair of pants. Two hours later. Seam ripping done. I got a little bit of extra length there. I just pulled out this cardboard pattern. This is one that I did for my denim jacket. Um, I will link that below. Um, you can see here, I probably am gonna wanna have a little bit more width here so that I can gather up the fabric and give it more of that bomber look. However, I just wanted to kind of see with the length. Um, if I line up my jersey here. Line up my jersey. It means that I need to have from about here down minus the little bit of um, ribbing that I want to put on. So we're really talking about only about 12, 13 inches here that I measured. Um, so I should definitely be able to get two out of each pant leg. I'm now going to cut these right up the inside seam. I could seam rip this instead, but I think I'm going to have plenty of width, so it'll just be faster to cut it. So now that everything is laying flat, my plan here is to cut right along the bottom, just above where the zippers start, just to block that out of the way. I'm gonna leave those pieces separate for something else. Then I'm going to divide whatever is left in half, and that's gonna be the length that I have to work with. And then I'll combine using the shape of the pattern and the size of my existing sleeve there on the jersey to decide on the width of the sleeve and the general shape. I started by laying the pants out flat and cutting off the part with the zipper that I won't be using. Here, I'm using a calendar as a straight edge. Desperate times. 
I could have cut through both sides at once, but I opted to cut one at a time instead for more control. I measured the halfway point for the leftover fabric, which was about 13 inches. I was committed to making two jackets with this one pair of pants. I cut along this line as well to see what I was working with and then used this as a template on the other side. I laid the jersey sleeve on top of my piece to get a sense of the width and followed the angle of the short sleeve with some pins to get a general shape. I found when I folded it over that this happened to line up perfectly with the existing angle on the pant leg. Awesome! At this point, I turned the mock-up sleeve right side out and pinned it to the sleeve of my jersey to try it on. And it ended up being too short. Plan B. I found some leather in my stock from a coat I had thrifted and cut up years ago. Maybe I can insert it to add length? Okay, back on track. I cut the sleeve shape where I had pinned it and then used that as a template to cut all my sleeves. There were a couple places around the top of the pants where I had to cheat a little bit to make it fit, but it worked out fine. I evened out my strips of black leather and cut another set in this white faux leather for the blue jacket. The last thing to cut was the ribbing for the bottom of the jacket and the sleeves. I cut a six inch strip off the bottom and the sleeves of the sweaters to get the perfect tube strips. Here are all the pieces cut and ready to be assembled. I started assembly by sewing the lower sleeve to the leather strip right sides together. I used these office clips I had on hand to hold the pieces together since leather doesn't pin very well. It was helpful to use the edge of the leather where it had already been sewn and folded. I always try to do this when I use thrifted leather or denim. I open out the seam and top stitch right along the old seam line to hide the holes from the old seam. Then I fold the sleeve in half right sides together to sew it closed. Here I'm struggling to hold the camera with one hand while I attempt to turn the sleeve right side out. Great content! Now it is ready to be attached to the jersey. I flip the jersey inside out and place the sleeve up inside to get the right sides together. I really love using these clips instead of pins since I could easily move them around and adjust them as I sewed. I'll definitely continue to use these as much as possible and might even invest in some actual sewing clips. I turned the sleeve and top stitch along the same way that I did before. I used an edging foot this time to create a perfect line close to the edge. Next, I flip the sleeve ribbing inside out and sew it right sides together at the bottom of the sleeve. All right, so I got both jackets to the same place now with the sleeves fully attached. Um, I think the next step is going to be to cut the bottom to the length that I want it to be and then go in and attach the ribbing around the bottom the same way I did on the sleeve. At that point, I should be able to put in the zipper and then I'll finish by turning under the ribbing on the sleeves and the bottom to finish everything off. Almost there. I tried on the jacket to check the length. I should have just used my zipper to determine the length, but I got lucky that my desired length and the zipper length were similar. I measured along the bottom, placed some pins, and cut along the line of the pins. Now I can sew the ribbing to the bottom of the jersey right sides together. 
I found the ribbing so frustrating to sew since it stretched and moved around so much, as did the jersey mesh. These two were like a match made in hell. I cut off any excess and start to pin my zipper in place by laying the jacket flat and pinning along one side right sides together. I sew along that one side, then flip the jacket inside out to allow me to pin the other side right sides together as well. I check frequently to be sure that the zipper is even at the top, as well as at the point where the jersey meets the ribbing. It will be super obvious if these two points don't line up, so it's best to check to make sure they're working well. I sew the second side, try it on to make sure it looks even and works properly, then top stitch very close to the edge along the front. For this jacket, I used white thread for the top and black thread along the bottom ribbing to blend in as much as possible. I also be sure to tuck away the end of the zipper around the top of the jersey to hide away the edge. I actually went back and hand sewed this a bit after to secure it more. Finally, I folded all of the ribbing up and turned it under a bit to hide the raw edge before pinning it along the inside. I opted to hand sew this so that I had maximum control and could avoid yelling at my machine any more than I already have this week. It also meant that I could achieve a perfect invisible seam on the inside of the jacket as well as the outside. It took forever, but it's the final step. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see y'all next week. 2,000 years later.